Ivinson's Nightcast. Good evening, I'm Erin Rogers in for Alyssa Ivinson. It was a beautiful and pretty sunny day for the first day of summer, but now we're looking at some storms tonight. So we'll get right to weather. Let's start things off with meteorologist Jesse Hula, who's been tracking storms all night. Yeah, we've been tracking these line of sh uh, showers and thunderstorms to move through the area. Earlier, it prompted a severe thunderstorm watch for the western half of our viewing area, but the National Weather Service has allowed that to expire as this line is weakening as it approaches Fort Wayne. Let's take a closer look here on Live Doppler 15 Fury Storm Tracker at some of the more impressive cells within this line. The most impressive right now, you can see some lightning showing up in Kosciuszko County as well as northern Wabash County. This is moving to the east around 25 miles per hour. So we'll put a storm track on this using our latest technology here. And you can see we've got an arrival time in Pearson around oh, two minutes or so. South Whitley 1111, Laurel around 1112, and Columbia City. This storm will arrive into your neck of the woods around 1127. We'll go a little further north towards Steuben and LaGrange County. Some heavier rain pushing east as well. Angola expect to see some heavy rain here within the next oh, 15 to 20 minutes or so. So we're tracking this rain for you this evening. We're going to have another several rounds of scattered showers and storms to talk about in the full forecast. All right, thank you, Jesse. Leaders are making a final push for collective bargaining. It's been the talk of the council for almost two months now, but union leaders say they still have unanswered questions and concerns about the ordinance passed by city council and vetoed by the mayor earlier this month. Today, union leaders held a picnic at Fryman Square to raise the public's awareness on the issue. A picnic at the park with an agenda on the side. We need to make ourselves known amongst the citizens of Fort Wayne as we are citizens of Fort Wayne. Union leaders sponsored the event to raise awareness to the collective bargaining issue affecting around 1,700 city employees and union representatives. That would be the first time a major policy change has happened in our community that has been unaccompanied by open public dialogue. The mayor vetoed the ordinance that would take away collective bargaining, but few have faith that will be sustained. Well, let's face it, if they go along party lines, it won't stand. I don't believe we can overturn a vote. They admit they're worried about the effects down the road, but this voter registration table is one way unions say they'll fight back. Legitimately are not being heard by the people that are elected to represent them. And there are a lot of registered Republicans in the public sector unions. The councilmen who support the ordinance say they don't agree with unions being written into the city code. Decisions are placed before you have to make a decision based on the merits, not on consideration of, uh, of what happens in, in uh, future elections. Those against the ordinance say collective bargaining has helped labor and management work together, and overriding the veto will send a bad message. The mayor uh, has a strong uh, presence here. His veto is saying this is something we really shouldn't be moving forward on as a community. And I'm afraid if we do, it'll divide us even further. City Council members say the vote to sustain or override the veto will happen during Tuesday's City Council meeting. A home in Roanoke is completely destroyed after a fire this morning. Multiple fire departments spent three hours working on the fire off Winters Road. The call originally listed the wrong address, so it took them almost 20 minutes to get there. Firefighters say the house was already gone by the time they arrived. No one was home, but police did rescue a dog. Islamic extremists now control a key border crossing in Iraq after capturing two more cities in the northwest part of the country. Yesterday, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, captured a town along the Syrian border. Now ISIS can easily move rebels and weapons back and forth from Syria to Iraq. Today, they overtook another town along the Euphrates River. An estimated 300,000 refugees have poured into the region. The crisis in Iraq is also driving up gas prices here in the United States. The national average is now 3.68 a gallon, the highest it's been on June 21st since 2008. Pope Francis has a new message for mobsters. He wants them to know they're excommunicated from the Catholic Church. He made a trip to southern Italy today where he held an outdoor mass for more than 100,000 people. It was in a town where an especially brutal branch of the Italian mafia is centered. Pope Francis said, quote, Those who live in their lives follow this path of evil as mafioso do, he said, are not in communion with God. They are excommunicated. A Vatican spokesman said the Pope's message to the mafia was not a formal decree. Instead, it was a signal to mobsters that they had to effectively excommunicate themselves. 
thousands of women, local women, are coming together to help make the community a better place. They call themselves Helping Neighbors. The group's goal is to help people in need of everyday items. They hold a come and get it garage sale where everything is donated. People can come shop and pick out items for free. Today, more than 50 families came out to the sale. Even if you work full time and you try to make all your ends meet, you still need clothing and clothing is expensive. So we are able to help everybody get something from the baby up to grown man. If you'd like to get involved, you can head to the group's Facebook page. There will be another garage sale next month. Art of all kinds is on display this weekend in Fort Wayne. More than 75 area and national artists are participating in the Covington Art Fair. It showcases paintings, photography, pottery, and more. There are also jazz musicians playing in Covington Plaza. The fair is closed for tonight, but don't worry, it runs again tomorrow from 11 to 4.